your brain from knowing to doing. The first step to seriously knowing yourself is to find the humility to see that you, you probably don't. I'm now 70 years old, and it's been a good 40 years since I set up the first standardized international database on the human brain. Quite a mouthful, isn't it? But from this brain science vantage point and my experience as a doctor, I was exposed to multidisciplinary evidence of the brain from knowing to doing framework. My biggest revelation has been that if you do not harmonize or align your rational thinking with your brain's emotions and intuition, you'll be like stumbling around in the dark. This video serves to try and switch on that light. Knowing your brain. Despite the astounding complexity of the brain, and much that we do not know, there is a lot that we do know about the essence of how all human brains work. The glaring brain insight that took me the longest to see is that above all, the brain prioritizes shortcuts and short term. Shortcuts to ensure safety first, the brain's main organizing principle and short-term for instant reward gratifications once safety is assured. The relatively recent trebling in brain size empowered the human brain with logic, empathy, and the capacity for longer-term thinking. Shortcuts, short-term, and rationality navigate our approximately 50,000 daily thoughts. The four key processes that govern your thoughts, your decisions and behaviours are emotions, intuition, feelings and rationality. Emotion and intuition occur automatically, non-consciously, you know, in other words, unconsciously. But you are consciously aware of your feelings and your rational thinking. So let's have a look at each of these four key processes. Emotions are a shortcut alarm system in your brainstem that helps you interpret environment and body language cues of what is threatening or rewarding. They are a key part of your automatic shortcuts for safety and short-term gratification. Intuition is a rapid best guess processing network of your most likely effective decision at any point in time and it is best not to underestimate your intuition. Feelings are your body activations, such as sweating or a gut reaction, triggered by your emotions, intuitions, and limbic system. Rational is your conscious, deliberate check of the details, using your frontal cortex, of what is your best decision option. And if any decision you make is not optimal, it will self-correct you. How these four key processes interact and create your unique personality and behavior is also influenced by your genetic predispositions and early conditioning. Emotion and intuition occur non-consciously within a fifth of a second. You are consciously aware of your feelings and your rational thinking from about half a second onwards as you implement your decisions and personality and your preferential behaviors. 
Yes, the human brain is the most complex system in the known universe, but its essence and complementarity of functions are kind of rather straightforward so far, right? Straightforward? So if that's the case, why can life sometimes be so challenging? Well, here's a spoiler alert. There are two distorting and sneaky issues at play in your brain that wreak havoc and are very clever at hiding out. By understanding the two trip-ups, you will become more powerful and you will recognize when they are being weaponized against you. First up is the profoundly ugly reality of biases. Over 100 non-conscious negative and positivity biases influence our thoughts, personal and financial decisions, behaviors, beliefs, and relationships. Biases are automatic shortcuts and short-term thinking errors that our brain uses to serve our safety and reward and simplify complex decision-making. The brain wants efficiency, first and foremost. Some of the best known biases are about gender, race, and age. Let me just go through a few examples of other biases because they're just so stark. Loss aversion. We feel the pain of losing more strongly than the pleasure of reward. Negativity bias. We pay much more attention to negative than positive information. Halo effect. The first aspect that we say about a person or a thing colors everything else. The most surreal bias to me is the scarcity bias, where we intensely want whatever we can't have. Like seriously? The bias that most limits our personal growth is the confirmation bias. That is when we seek out information that best validates our beliefs and we ignore the disconfirming evidence. The most dangerous bias that imperils humanity is the them-us bias, which exaggerates the us virtues of the groups to which we belong and finds fault and even demonizes the them who are different from us. If you take away nothing else from this Overview Brain video, get a handle on your biases. They are the greatest limitation to personal growth. The second matter that can derail you is when your brain's emotion and intuition and rational thinking do not harmonize. When they do, it's magical. Resulting in aligned communication, peak performance flow, creativity, innovations, and success. Your brain is marvelously efficient and effective most of the time. But when the four key brain processes don't harmonize, it's like a fractured disconnection within ourselves. This fracture is a cauldron for hijacks of inauthentic communication and catastrophic behavioral outcomes. There's a growing realization that the criticality of rational thinking alone in decision making has been overstated. Make no mistake. Your gut intuition influences your rational thinking. With communication in relationships, teams, and groups. More generally, fracture dynamics is where anger, lust, and greed feed off each other. Where rationalizations are conjured up. 
opportunists lurk. Defenses are activated. Self-regulation goes out the window. And what people say is not what they do. And it's where imposters put on their masks to land grab and self-aggrandize. Despite these two booby traps, the brain is remarkably adaptive and neuroplastic. We are not victims. We create our reality by choosing our own thoughts. How we respond to any situation is more important than the situation itself, particularly because that is mainly what we have control over. Knowing yourself includes assessing your brain. If you don't measure it, you can't manage it. Assess your brain online and self-reflect on the implications of your brain scores. Isn't that a wonderful mirror of ourselves? Just a handful of scores. And, and there's a link to 10 online assessments to know your brain on my website, www.dreviangordon.com. The brain database that I set up highlighted that we are all fluctuating along a mental health, well-being, peak performance continuum. All of us. We're never in one little pigeonholed state. It is a total continuum. Everybody has some extent of stress, depression, and mental health challenges. What differs between people is the extent of their genetic predispositions, their conditioning, their trauma, their life experiences, and their ability to cope. Doing. How to create new habits. The biggest gap in creating new habits is going from knowing to doing. To bridge that gap and face your brain's fear of failure, the benefit must be clear, simple, and worthwhile enough to activate your willpower to make it happen. The first and most important step is to have a brain-based plan. As Ben Franklin emphatically stated, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. The Gordon Three-Step Habit Plan distills what has been shown to work in people who generate sustainable new habits. And the three steps are readiness, repeat and rewire, and track and transfer into a lifestyle habit. Step one, are you ready? Because change is a threat to your comfort zone, it is better to wait until you are clear about your why and truly ready to commit to a habit plan than to attempt a new habit half-heartedly. Lukewarm readiness is more likely to lead to failure. Step two, repeat and rewire. The core of any new habit is a focused and very specific goal wired by small steps. The brain has inherent neuroplasticity. Thoughts become outcomes. Neural networks that fire together, wire together. Small step rewiring works best if the steps are so simple to complete that they are almost failure-proof for daily success. Each small step will release a dopamine reward. And with each small step completion, you must also visualize the longer-term, compounded, big, sustainable benefits that are inevitable. That combination of an instant, immediate gratification, dopamine, win, buzz, as well as being a bit patient with the help of your frontal cortex 
and constantly foresee the longer term, larger benefit. And that combination is one of the major success markers of achieving a sustained habit. Bit of postponement of gratification, but you still get that immediate buzz from the small steps. Personalize what you will do using PARS, P-A-R-S. P is prompt. Anchor your new habit training to well-established daily habits that you already do on autopilot. So use them as the prompt. A is actions. Actions are the small step practice of the new habit immediately following the prompt. And as I said, every small step completion is success. And R equals rewards. Self-reward. Congratulate yourself immediately after each daily successful small step has been completed. Even small rewards like a smile, a fist pump, or a positive affirmation such as I am winning are critical to ensure the habit of wiring with pause. Begin with the 30-day challenge. Consolidate your habit in this 30-day challenge. The first and main step is to fill your pause into your plan of what and when you will train each day. Download a one-page success plan worksheet from my website. Step three, track and transfer. If you don't measure it, you can't manage it. Seeing is believing. Every day, track your small step par wins. And one thing that you improved on and do that in your success plan. Track it. Even if it's a tiny improvement, such as any better practice quality, longer length, improved score. Like training a muscle, the more you practice, the more you will see the results of your efforts. I'd like to end this brain tour by reinforcing five of the basic takeaways of the brain from knowing to doing framework. One, know your brain's preferences for safety, reward, emotion, intuitive and rational thinking. Two, confront your biases. Three, harmonize rational and intuitive processes for optimal performances. Four, be present in the moment rather than preoccupied with your past regrets and future fears. And five, work smarter, not harder, with a brain-based plan for new small step rewiring habits. There is an unprecedented fear of the pace of change and uncertainty. But there is also unprecedented hope for new possibilities of self-enlightenment. Join the brain revolution. There has never been a more pressing time to know, befriend, and enhance your brain from knowing to doing.